I'm Swimming Pool Steve, and here are three bad facts about saltwater pools. And the first one, I mean, it's not really bad, but for a lot of pool owners, it will be bad because they're searching for an alternative to chlorine. They've heard chlorine is bad, they don't want it, so they choose salt water. But the problem with that is saltwater pools are chlorine pools. You didn't choose something different. What you did is you changed the way that chlorine is getting into your water. It used to be that somebody else manufactured it, you bought the chlorine from them, and then you added it to your water. And what you've changed by adding 3,000 parts per million of salt to your pool is now you no longer go and buy chlorine. You periodically buy salt and then you generate your own chlorine from the sodium chloride that you added to the pool. So that's the first bad thing about saltwater pools. They're not an alternative to chlorine. More accurately, they're a chlorine generation system. So the second fact about saltwater pools, if you get one, you are going to have chronically high pH in your water. And the reason why that is, is because the type of chlorine that saltwater systems generate has a very high pH, and as a result, the pH of your water will always be drifting upwards. Now, the total alkalinity in your water helps to resist against the upwards movement of pH, but ultimately, if you have a saltwater pool, you will almost always have a pH above 8.0. And this is very significant because chlorine is not very effective at pH above 8. By the time you get above 8.2 and certainly above 8.4, the chlorine in your water is almost completely ineffective. And so that's very important. You might measure your water and test that you have one or two parts per million of free chlorine, but in reality, you have much less than that. In effect, you have much less than a few parts per million of chlorine because the chlorine is rendered ineffective by the high pH that is chronically in your water from your salt water system. And just as a side note, the solution to that would be to explore borates for your swimming pool because that can help to limit the upward drift of pH. And they work by establishing your pH and alkalinity where you want it, and then you add about 30 to 50 parts per million of borates. And that really helps to kind of lock in those values. And if you're a saltwater pool owner, that's definitely something that you should be looking at. But I want to mention the third fact, the third bad fact about saltwater pools. One of the things we measure in swimming pools is TDS, total dissolved solids, or how much stuff is dissolved into the water of this pool. And once you get too high of a number of total dissolved solids, what the pool becomes somewhat unmanageable and your chemical additions aren't really effective in the way that they used to be. And it's just because there's too much stuff in your water. So when you take 3,000 parts per million of salt, which is usually a few hundred pounds of pure salt, and add it to your water, you are artificially increasing the total dissolved solid level of your pool beyond which you would normally drain and replace your water with some clean, fresh water. So that's significant, not in and of itself, but how it relates to the saturation index for your water. Now, this is approaching some more complicated stuff about water chemistry, but essentially what saturation index is, is it's the, the balance equation that determines whether your water is in a neutral state, an acidic state, or a scaling state. And with saltwater pools, chronically, you will find that you're in a scaling state. And that's due to the high total dissolved solid level of the pool combined with the high pH level of the water. And then of course, it also factors in water temperature and a few other things. But primarily with saltwater pools, you will find that you're in a scaling state. Scale can form on the electrodes of your saltwater system, but it can also form in the internals of your heater, which can corrode and damage the metal inside of your heater. So these are all things that you need to consider if you're thinking about getting salt water for your pool. If you found this information helpful, please be sure to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And you can check out my website, swimmingpoolsteve.com.